Away we go. Welcome, Facebook. It's uh, time for church. We're in Romans 8 today. We've got a good crowd here in church today. Praise the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. And we're get, getting back to normal. We're, we're not all the way back to normal. We're not having the sit-down meals now. We're, but we're providing food, take along and things. And we're doing what we can in the midst of it. You might believe half of it. You might not. But we try to get along with folks. It's a little pathetic when the same doctor is saying one thing one day and something else the next day. You know, I kind of take that with a grain of salt like I did with my teenagers when they lie to me, you know. <laughs> what, once, like, like Judge Judy said, my, my favorite people, Judge Judy, once you lie to Judge Judy, you're through. <laughs> you're through. <laughs> She ain't going to believe a word you said. Now, I, I'm not that. That's the way she is, Judge Judy. You know what Judge Judy says? Do you know when a teenager is lying? Every time they open their mouth. <laughs> that's from Judge Judy. She must know something. She makes uh, $48 million a year, $850,000 a show. Pretty good money for an old lady in her 70s, huh? All right, I said I was going to preach the Bible. I am. Matthew 8. The flesh and the spirit. Lord, help us now. Bless our congregation. It's so good to have the church. There's nothing like meeting. You guys out there on Facebook, that's okay. Some of you out of the state. Some of you are homebound. And whatever. There's nothing like meeting personally. That's called church, ecclesia. Gathering together, real folks. Many places are trying to stop that today. They say you can gather and riot. You can riot and burn buildings down and curse America and spit on cops. You can do that. That's legal, but you can't meet for church. We're meeting for church, praise God. <clears throat> Thank God that's not in our state. Other states it is. So we're going to look at Romans 8. Great, powerful chapter. Use my tongue. Holy Spirit, guide me. Open the ears of our church members here, personally with me, and those in out on the internet. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. There is therefore now no condemnation. Man, that's just, we could, I could preach the whole half hour on this. I could preach an hour, preach, no condemnation. It means you're not condemned. Why are you and I so busy condemning other folks? Why are we so critical? You know, the Bible says in another portion of Scripture, judge not, lest ye be judged. The Lord is the judge. The Lord Jesus Christ. I, I'm a little sick and tired. These Pharisees that looking down on people and condemning everybody, bringing accusation against them, you say, well, it's true. I believe what Grandma said. You know what Grandma said? Uh, if you got nothing good to say about someone, don't say anything at all. That's like Doris. I visited her a couple days ago. I took my grandson over there to visit her. She likes my grandson. He's a, he's a real likable guy, Andrew. He's been helping me work the last couple of days. He's a good kid. I like him. It's, you know, it's hard to fight the world. He goes to that Devil's College. I said the Devil's College in Tallahassee, Florida State University. Party school, drunkard school, sex pervert school. My 22-year-old grandson got to go there. Doesn't have to. I fought it tooth and nail from the first day he went. He, he made this comment to me. I'm going to put it on. I'll tell it anyway. He said, college, we're working. He says, Papa, he calls me Papa. Papa, college is good. I says, what do you mean? And he said, Aunt Barb, which is my daughter, 
And Patrick, Matt, Patrick and Barb run the mission in Milwaukee that I used to run. He used to be my assistant. I let him take over when I left. Aunt Barb and, and uh, Uncle Pat, they sat next to each other in college. And look at here, now they are. I says, <laughs> here's what I told them. I says, you ain't going to meet no one like my daughter Barb, a good Christian girl in Tallahassee. You go over to Pensacola where she went to school, <clears throat> Pensacola Christian College, then you'll find a good Christian woman. You sit down there. You know what? At Pensacola, when my daughter went there and Patrick went there uh, many years ago now, they, uh, it's a beautiful college, beautiful campus. If, if you're ever in Pensacola, make sure to stop at Pensacola Christian College. A wonderful place. Wonderful. They turn out wonderful people. And uh, they had little benches. They had a beautiful campus. The reason they have so much money is that they have a Becca books. They supply the books, the reading material for most Christian schools in America and across, around the world, actually. So they have a cash cow with them books so that, that you can get into the... Uh, they, they, if you're a preacher like I was, you can go cheaper. And if you're smart, you can get a scholarship and she didn't hardly cost her nothing. You know, it didn't hardly cost her nothing, but you know what? She paid for it. <sighs> Why didn't you? She's trying to teach you something. People got to work. Not, I give them help. Yeah, I didn't say I didn't give them help. I do once in a while, but I'd rather have them. Uh, uh, you, know, you, you know what my grandson's got up at Florida State? Bunch of bills. Government loans. Anyway, I said, you ain't going to find my daughter Barb at Florida State. You're going to find her at Pensacola. I said, who's going to be sitting next to you at Florida State? Jezebel. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Marcel, we're having church. Uh, Jezebel. She'll take you home for the night or take you out and smoke some pot with you or some other dope. Wicked school. It's, it's, it's always in the top ten of biggest party schools. It makes one often. Therefore is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. A Christian ought not to go to Florida State University. There's Christians, preachers that disagree with me. I have family members that are preachers that disagree with me. They say you can influence them. No, they drag you down. You don't pick them up. I believe Christians should go to Christian schools. I'm glad you glad your girls go to Christian school. Yeah. All of my kids, they went to Christian school. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Because you can't have education without God. Don't forget that. You can't have education without God. These secular uh, uh, they'll teach you communism, they'll teach you free sex, they'll teach you uh, no limits on dope, and, and, uh, and, and then you, you, uh, if you dare say anything, you, at Florida State, you can't stand up in a class and take, uh, take any say anything against it. They'll shut you up or throw you out, they'll flunk you for sure, that professor will flunk you for sure. Unless you take his foolishness. No condemnation. Which are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus today? What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? What do you think? What does it mean? You got an idea? What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? It means to be saved. It means to have a new, that you're a new person. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a born again Christian. Your life's getting straightened around. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not, and, and don't come around telling me that I know something about David and I know something about Lisa. Yeah, and I know something about you, and God knows a lot more about you. Don't come pointing fingers at anybody. Amen. I'm glad I made a little progress. You, are you glad you, you're glad you got saved? You ought to something that made you a little bit better. 
Now these, these precious couple here that used to live in sin, I married them. Not married in this church or the other church. This church, yeah. Married in this church. And uh, the work, had a place all these years. Got a new car. Why they got a new car and I don't? Because they work and you don't. <laughs> well, that ain't Christian. That's as Christian as you can get. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Here, here's one of the hardest workers we got on, on the front row here. This guy's up. What time, what time do you start uh, your job in the morning? Quarter to five. He gets a cup of coffee, then he's starting work. And, and he's a hard worker. I've seen him working. And uh, and he's a generous person. Generous person. He brought me some tools today. And, and But he's a hard worker. Work is good. Well, I know you always give people stuff. And that's good. But being a hard worker or giving stuff away, it won't get you to heaven. I, I'm, I'm just saying that. You, 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 you got to be born again. Being good is good. Problem is, there's a lot of Christians that say they're Christians that that don't work and they're not givers or takers. Some people, every time I see them, every time I see them, uh, you, you, you know what I see? I see their hand held out. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. Pastor, let me tell you this. Long, sad story. Was coming back from Oregon. No, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I, I, I even got a laugh out of Joe on that one. Crying all the way in the bank. The flesh and the spirit. Where do you live today? Are you a spiritual person? If you're saved, it says you're supposed to be spiritual. Let's go on. For the law of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Ghost, of life in Christ hath made me free from the law and sin and death. You see, death condemned me. It says, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. Uh, you, know what the, uh, you know what the law said? Don't get drunk. No drunkard shall inherit eternal life. What did you and I do? Got drunk. Oh, no more. I ain't had a drink since I've been saved April 4th, 1969. But I used to get... See, because the law told me not to drink. But I couldn't fulfill that. I drank. But now by grace through the Spirit, I don't drink. And, and, and you know, th this will shock you. Never... Never, never. Hand on this big Bible. Never, never, never. Since I was saved, April 4th, 1969, have I wanted a drink. Never. Never once. And I could... Sit down, drink a whole case of beer by myself. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't do that every day. I'm not like some of you. You got to have it every day. You're drunk every day. And every time, I mean, you're good work. I got a lot of people come this way. They're good workers. Hey, Marcel, please, come on. Let, let's forget all that. What, what do you look at? at the, okay, well, let, yeah, I, 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 all I want you to focus on now is what I'm talking about. You want to teach them the Bible later? Teach them later. Well, just listen to me now. This is about Romans 8, and I want you to listen. You want to be a Bible teacher? Do it on your own time, not on my time here. So uh, that's what, I hate people coming to church, and then they're going some other way, and they're going through it. Just pay attention. When I'm looking down at the Bible, read and stick with me, because... God's having me say this for a reason. It's going to help you. You might have some other stuff, and that might be good. It might be better than what I'm saying, but this is the deal right now, so let's stick on it, huh? So, uh, how'd that happen? 
how, how could how could it happen to me? Through the Spirit of God by faith. How many of you you say I I'm a saved person. I'm a saved person. Now, we've got any saved people here? We've got a few. Okay, I'm saved. Good. The rest of you can't raise your hand. You need to get saved today. Because if you don't, you go to hell. Now, how many of you believe that a saved person has the Spirit of God dwelling within them? The Holy Spirit, God lives within you. Do you believe that? Okay, all right. Well, then you can. You, you, you should listen to this then and pay attention. The Bible says... The spirit that raised God from the dead, Jesus Christ, resurrection of the dead, is the same spirit that lives in you. And if you walk in the spirit, you'll never sin. You'll never sin. You can't sin. It's absolutely impossible to sin when you're walking in the spirit. Because God is perfect. And he is sinless. And the Spirit of God that dwells within us puts us in a state of perfection if we walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. The trouble with you and I sometimes, as God's children, is that we, we fall back and we walk in the flesh. Did that ever happen to you that you say, I've known it, but I've, I've got back into some mess I used to be in, and and uh, I thought I was doing good, and and uh, I, I had something, and uh, lo and behold, the devil turned my head, and I got back to it. Did it ever happen to you? It happened to me. It happened to the preacher. It happened to the preacher. I ain't, I ain't here looking down at anybody. That's my favorite stuff. You got an extra bottle? He ain't saying nothing. That's my favorite stuff, Trace. Come on in, sit down. You're late for church, man. <laughs> you got two bottles. I, I have one of them. Put it on the side. Donnie, go put it in the icebox. You ain't opened it yet and spit it in there nothing, have you? <laughs> he ain't giving it up. Oh, my God. All right, keep your old lip and soda. All right, now he's trying to take the service over. Sit down before I hit you with your stick. Sit down, Trace. <laughs> okay. All right, he's a showboat. Don't pay no attention to him. I'm going to make you sit in the back row again. Sit down, sit down, sit down. All right, let's get back to it. So the spirit, you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust and desires. We're getting a good crowd today. This is good. I'm excited. I like people to hear the word of God. You don't have to sin. 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. It says that there is no sin. How does it go? I got Come on, old mind. Let's get in, let's get in here yet. There is no temptation taking you. But is common to man. We all got it. But God is faithful. And will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able. But will with the temptation make a way of escape. I should tell you what Trace had. He had on his, he had on his Facebook today. He had a dope pipe on there. <laughs> that was a dope pipe. Don't tell me. I, I put right on the Facebook. I says, that's a dope pipe, Trace. Do dope pipes, they stand and they got a thing coming out the side of it and you suck on it or something? Isn't that a dope pipe? Huh? The dope pipe looked like to me. I see the hippies sucking on them. Is that a dope pipe or not? Yeah. You, you took a picture of it you put it on Facebook today. Medicine, you had medicine. Oh, message. Oh, no. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I read it. <laughs> that was enough. You know what they say, a picture would give you a thousand words? Someone put a dope pipe up, it means they're sucking dope. Let the man in. Oh, he, he can go that way. That's all right. 
He, let him in. Uh, you go down here, you go down the International Speedway now, over on the right, just about two blocks apart, they got two beautiful, magnificent buildings. Cure Leaf. One of the names is Cure Leaf. Cure Leaf. Doesn't that sound nice? It should say the devil's dope on there. Let me ask you a question. I don't know. You you guys you guys and girls that smoke marijuana. Uh, is it cheaper to get it uh, from medication from a doctor or buy it on the street? Buy it on the street. 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 Buy it on the street. Well, uh, Gary, you better talk to these people. Uh, that uh, you say it's about the same. They say buy it on. The, you better talk to them. You get your you get your marijuana cheaper. <laughs> Cheaper on the street. That's what I thought. It usually is. Yeah. Right usually is. The right people. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the devil's people out there smoking dope. <laughs> Trace, I don't want to hear nothing. All right. Let's go on with the scripture. Verse 3. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. Because our flesh tries to not drink or not lie or not have bad sexual thoughts. Anybody ever had bad sexual thoughts? A couple honest people in the building. <laughs> the devil uses sex more to drag people down than anything. Anything. Sex. Yeah. You don't have to be overcome by it. There are no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. But God is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in this, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. you got to go after the spirit. How are you going to watch after? you got to be in this. Like I told my... I work with my grandson all the time. He's with me yesterday working last couple days. I says, you got to, I told him this morning what he has to do. You take the same touch with me. I says, you're at, when you go back up there, there's a few Christians in Tallahassee. I don't think a whole bunch. But I says, you got to get with Christians. And uh, I said, we got to study. And I, I'm going to study this, uh, Romans 8 with him. We, we studied it yesterday. We studied it for about an hour yesterday, Romans 8, what I'm preaching on today. I want to teach them. And I sent them. How, how many of you have ever heard of the Bible teacher, uh, G. Vernon McGee, through the Bible? Has anyone ever heard of him? Oh, he's good. He's a Bible teacher. He was alive 50 years ago when I first got saved. He was on the radio. He preached through the Bible. I like through the Bible, verse by verse. I like preaching. I like to take it like this and preach verse by verse. Because then, see, there's a lot of preachers take one verse and they chop it all up and lie about it. I mean, you take it one after another, it's got to say what it's got to say. It's, it's called uh, uh, taking it in context. You can, uh, you can take any verse out of context and make it a pretext, make it some foolishness. Because you're not, you're not dealing with the truth on it, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, G. Vernon McGee, I've got it up on my Facebook page if you want to get I put it up this morning, uh, his comments on it, and uh, I'll send it to you if you want. And uh, if, you're on the, uh, if you're on my text thing, let me know. I'll shoot it to you. But McGee's good on it. I, I read McGee on it this morning, and, and I read Matthew Henry, who's a good commentator of old, very good. And I read uh, John Wesley, who's a good commentator, and finally the Methodist Church. So I, I read other people what they say. I read the Bible mostly, but... G, uh, Vernon McGee through the Bible, he's good now. He's dead now. I've been dead a long time. But he was alive when I was in, in 1969 when, when I was first saved. Verse 6. Look at verse 6. Romans 8. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life. Anyone ever tell you, get a life, man? <laughs> get a life. Only way you're going to get a life is get eternal life and follow God. You have no peace because you don't have the Prince of Peace. The devil is a liar. He'll make things confused. 
He'll tie you up and he won't let you loose. Because you got to walk in the spirit. In the flesh is bondage. How many of you admit here today? You don't have to tell me what it is. I, I ain't trying to play detective. God don't have to play detective. Uh, he know what you did and he knew you were going to do it before you did it. <laughs> Think about that one. Think about that one. <laughs> before you ever did it, he knew you were How do you know that? Uh, it's called foreknowledge. Because he's God and we're just little dummies that sin. That need him. Amen? Amen. You better hook up with him. We got some people need to get right with God, even here today. Yeah. So to be carnally minded is death, hell. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life, eternal life, peace, joy, glory. I love it. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity or against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So the, the carnal mind, you can't keep the law. Got to do it in the spirit. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You wonder why you got so much trouble? <laughs> why, why do you and I do such stupid things? I'm not going to pick on anybody. I just mentioned myself too. I forget what a, a, a great old preacher said this, and I believe the Bible teaches it. The comment was this. Let us be very hard and stern and critical of ourself Amen. and very forgiving and loving on others. Amen. That'd get it, folks. And we're going to sit up like a Pharisee, like we're somebody. We ain't no, you ain't no better than nobody. I ain't, either. I ain't, no, I ain't better than nobody in this place. <coughs> I ain't nothing but a sinner like everybody in here and everybody out there on Facebook. Why does this thing say low battery? Supposed to be charging. Oh, I forgot to push the button. This is a new, this is a new battery I got. But I plugged it in. But you got to push the button on the side. My other one, you just got to put Anyway, it's working now. We'll be all right. Close. Okay. Okay, I know I got to close. Bad battery. Not a bad battery. It was not. So, the spirit. Walk in the spirit. You can do you know how do you know if you're in the spirit today? Or do you have a clear conscience? Do you have a clear conscience? Do you have a clear conscience with God? Now remember, he knows everything about you, beginning and end. He knows everything you think or do. So do you have a clear conscience with God and your fellow man? Then you got peace. See, you got too much junk in your trunk. Like, uh, who said that? I forget. Oh, oh. I hate professional sports now. <laughs> All this mess they got in there. But it was, it was fun. I thought it was funny. It was, uh, oh, it was, it was back when Dennis Rodman played for Detroit. When I was a big fan of Detroit. And, and, uh, uh he was asking them, so they're asking, you know how Dennis Rodman, he really went weird, but he's a fairly, I wouldn't say normal guy, because I don't think none of them basketball players are normal, but they asked about Michael Jordan. Something about, was he, what was Michael Jordan, uh, could uh, uh, could he do something one-on-one -on, -one on Michael Jordan? Ask him, but usually these guys are pretty, could you beat him? And uh, he shook his head. Nope. Why couldn't you beat him? And Dennis Rodman says, he got too much junk in his trunk. <laughs> and of course, Michael Jordan, I guess, I think, I, I, uh, this is debatable, but if he wasn't, uh, 
I think he's better than Le LeBron James. I don't want to get in a fight with you about basketball players, but Michael Jordan was the deal as far as I mean. He had it, he had it all. When there, was, when there was two minutes to play and you were 10 points down, Jordan would win it for you. LeBron can't. I'm just telling you, just check statistics on that. I'm out of it. I used to be a sports junkie. I knew all about all the sports. I wouldn't watch a one of them now. And it's a, it's a mess. And uh, anyway, uh, I'll stick to the Bible. But I use it in the vernacular of the world. If your conscience isn't right with God or your fellow man, you got too much junk in your trunk. Amen. And when I say junk, I don't mean good junk like Michael Jordan had about basketball. He could do anything and everything. What 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 couldn't Michael Jordan do with a basketball? I mean, <laughs> he could shoot from outside, shoot from inside. He could rebound. He, he just he had no weakness. He had not a weakness. LeBron has a weakness. He can't win in the end. That was Jordan's strongest point. <laughs> All he said was, give me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> and he'd get it done. He has some good basketball junk. But that junk you and I got in our trunk, it ain't good. It's sin. Amen. I'm clean right now. Been for a while. How do you keep clean? You check in every few minutes. <laughs> you hear me? If you feel kind of squeamish a little bit, if you're a real Christian, I say if you're a real Christian, if you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you, God will tell you there's something wrong. Search me, O God, and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. That's what we need to do. As we need to do it every day. I need it. The heart of man is desperately wicked, all of us. So we got to walk in the Spirit. Amen. If you're saved, you got the Spirit. you got to walk in it. Read a few more verses and we'll be done. Verse 10. Romans 8. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life. Because of righteousness. See, righteousness. God's righteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the resurrection. The righteousness of God. I'm so sick and tired of so-called Christians that think they're so hot and look down at anybody. I, I know preachers that says, oh, Brother Varga. I mean, a preacher told me this. A number of preachers have. I feel sorry for you. What do you mean you feel sorry? Why do you feel sorry for me? Well, you, your congregation. You may have a preacher tell me this. I don't know how you can work with them. Bunch of dope heads and whores and nasty people. I, I was pretty kind to them because they're preachers. But I should have just said to them, oh, you mean like you? <laughs> you mean like you, preacher, that uh, uh, you might not picking up a uh, you might not be picking up a, a whore on Ridgewood, but you're thinking about it. <laughs> you know, you know, if you play the games in your mind, it's like you've done it. Did you know that? You ain't hiding it from God. You can hide it from your wife. You can hide it from the preacher, but you can hide it from God. The mind. But if you're going to have peace, you're going to have to be cleansed. The Bible says... Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations. That's them hateful thoughts you have. That's them sexual perverted thoughts you have. That's those love for alcohol and money and on and on. Casting down imaginations <clears throat> and bringing every thought, the thought, the life, the thought, that's where it's at, the thought. The thought into the obedience of God. 
and bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. What do you think about that? 2 Corinthians 3. Yeah. that would get it, won't it? You don't have a clear conscience. Maybe it's because you've never been saved. Maybe it's because you're backslidden. I don't know. I'll tell you this. I, I stay right with God. I eat nothing. I've taken my hand the last few weeks, put my hand on the Bible, and says I'm right with God. I ain't hiding nothing from God because I can't hide nothing from God, and I'm not hiding anything from you. And if God shows me something where I'm wrong, I'll repent of it. And I'll confess it, and I'll apologize to you. God wants us to love folks and do right. It's going to say something, but I ain't going to say that. Listen, listen. Do you have the peace of God that passes all understanding? Can you sing this song with me? Nothing between my soul and my Savior. You see, sin gets between our soul and our Savior. The Holy Ghost lives in us if we're saved. But we need to cleanse our heart. The psalmist David said in Psalm 51, Renewing me a right spirit. That's what the psalmist said, yeah. Creating me a clean heart. A clean heart is a heart that has confessed sin. What junk you got in your trunk? What kind of hatred do you have? What kind of bad thoughts? What kind of lust for drugs do you have? What kind of, what is it? What is it? What is it? You're not going to have peace. Till you cleanse through the blood of Christ as a lost person or as a backslidden Christian. Lord, thank you for my dear people. Nice crowd today. Thank you, Lord. I love to assemble with the believers. Thank God. Bless us, Lord. Those that aren't saved, you know it. You're on Facebook. You're here in church. You know you've never been born again. You know you never repented. you got to repent. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Romans 10, 13 says. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Get saved today. You know if you're saved or not. Turn from your sin. Repent. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day, the best I know how, with an honest heart. I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now thankful for those that have prayed that now you that are backslidden we all get backslidden somewhat first john 1 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that's from saved people what's your sin what's that junk in your trunk christian confess it now turn from it be clean now be clean be clean Confess it right now. God's listening. Say, Lord, be merciful. I've been harboring this. I've been living with this wickedness as a Christian for days, for months, sometimes for years. I repent. Cleanse me. Give me peace. Give me joy in my heart. Give me a clean heart. Only God can do it. Only his spirit. Thank you, Lord, for our gathering. Thank you. Work in hearts, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now listen.